Come on. Look at that. Look at that. Yes, and all they want to do is climb on me. And uh, how could a lizard really like attention like these guys do? But they do. Just doing a quick video. These are blue tree monitors. A uh, very shy animal, but just gorgeous. That's a sexual pair. Um, they're very wiry. They're, you know, they don't really enjoy being handled. Uh, definitely nervous, but they're uh, not particularly bitey at all. Just very flighty. This is a wild caught pair. You take a long time to acclimate, you know, as, as you know, you want to be real conscientious in how you set them up. Uh, be careful not to really stress them out too much. These guys are largely insectivores. In the wild, they would eat lizards, birds, and certainly all sorts of insects. So in captivity, you know, trying to get them to eat dubia roaches, lobster roaches, and uh, last case scenario, uh, at least for us, is uh, crickets, because I don't really value crickets as a food source. Um, beneath this animal is a nest box right there and this nest box has a hole here and it goes all the way through this cage. Can't really see in here but there's a bird squawking. A water vessel down here. I put a removable bin here and then I can put the food in here and I'll come down and visit that and uh, they are, after all, largely boreal, so I have lots of uh, vines for them to uh, move up and down. If we look up, this is the bottom of the nest box, so I would generally watch to see if a female is excavating. Normally I could note the female looking larger and, and feeling that she's gravid, but then she'd start visiting the nest box and she'd lay her eggs in here and you often would see them. All right, so. Blue tree monitors, very much a bubblegum video. You, yes you, and you. That's just wonderful. Come on. Look at that. Yes, and all they want to do is climb on me. And uh, how could a wizard really like attention like these guys do, but they do. And uh, this is what happens when you have amazing socialized animals that grow up in a really, you know, friendly situation where they're getting attention. Look at this, they just, they crave it. And uh, these are big predators, essentially. But a dog and a cat is a big predator but we've been so uh, under the you know the idea that you know they're domesticated, so we see this big predator, but it acts very different than what we associate a big predator, like the wild state of one of these guys. But look at this, look at that. It just loves attention, loves getting rubbed. Yes, you're a big hand. That's a big T negative, so you can see what the T negatives turn into. They turn into these big filthy, wonderful, crazy looking things. You know, if you, if you had big water vessels, so if you had better situation than I do, I'm able to keep these guys in because, you know, I have a lot of monitors and, you know, space. But if, if you really could get their uh, water situation, you would have less staining on them. Kind of like I'm playing with like my cats or a dog, a puppy or something like that. These guys just ate too, and it's really you. Um, you don't really think about as I'm playing with these guys. I don't think, oh, you just ate and I need to watch my hand. I just gotten so uh, used to my interactions with these animals and what I anticipate and what I expect. 
she wants to climb on me. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, but, but why? Come out, come out. Oh, look who's a big fatty. I'm not pregnant. No way. You're gonna start jittering? I'm messing with your woman. And uh, what's interesting about water monitors, or monitors in general, you really have to understand the psychology of these animals. And these animals are very particular in what they want, what you can do, what you cannot do. And you have to understand. There's all sorts of dynamics. There's certain uh, in <laughs> individuals and uh, what you can do with them and what they expect. And who gets along with who. So not all monitors are uh, gonna get along with each other. They're gonna, you're gonna have um, ones that are just intolerant. What's interesting, females. Females really judge their males. And so if she detects weakness and she feels that he's inferior uh, to breed with or whatever, this female who could be the friendliest, most wonderful animal, if she doesn't feel like he's got what it takes, she could easily murder him or at least attack him. And this is kind of what they do. All right, you guys are going to just come out and cause untold mayhem. Come on, come on. I guess this is what's happening. Oh, oh, blah. <laughs> That really looks disgusting. You're like a bloated tick. She's actually pretty good because we, we, we let her slim down. Oh, you, you're not gonna, you're not gonna participate? Come here. You're gonna be very upset when you realize she's out in La La Land. Come here. Come here. Do these just to take? Johnny, we can't just take these? Are for the birthday party, Johnny? I don't understand, yes. but they're... Smack the shit out Okay. So, in reality, this is what's known as a western hog nose snake. The reason why they call the hog nose snake is because if you look at their face, they got that mm -hmm. turned up nose that looks just like a pig. They actually use that for rooting around in leaves looking for their favorite food, which is frogs and toads. So, uh, this is a little bit different than most other species of venomous snakes. Uh, the western hognose snakes are what are called a rear fanged venomous snake. So most venomous snakes like cobras, vipers, rattlesnakes, things like that, they've got hollow teeth, hollow fangs in their mouth. They've got two teeth right in the front that are just like a needle where they're empty in the middle and the venom goes from the glands in the back of the head all the way down into those teeth and into whatever they're biting. But hognose snakes are rear fanged, so what that means oh is that they've got grooved teeth in the back of their mouth. So their teeth aren't hollow, they just have a slit down the side of it, and they really have to chew on something for quite a while in order to inject that venom. So a reptile's first line of defense is its camouflage. When a predator can't find you, a predator can't hurt you. The next thing that a reptile wants to do when it is discovered by a predator is it wants to be intimidating. So they're gonna hiss, they're gonna huff, they're gonna puff, they're gonna make noise, they're gonna lift themselves up, try to make themselves look scary because the more scary they look, the more likely you are to leave them alone because they really don't want you to mess with them because you could potentially be wanting to eat them. He thinks, or she thinks that I might try and eat her. So this is a full-grown adult uh, western hognose snake girl. The boys only get about half that size, so they're not really a big uh, snake in particular. And like I was mentioning, these are from the Midwestern United States. So all venomous snakes, including the hognose snakes, their venom are designed for their food. It's not really designed for predators. So even though a rattlesnake or a cobra might be able to kill you if it bites you, um, really? They could, but their venom is not designed to kill you. So it's not like the movies where you get bit and then you fall over and you die like right away. If you get bit by even some of the most toxic species of venomous snakes, it can take from two to ten hours to actually die from your venomous snake oh. bite. So if you can get to the hospital within two to ten hours, there's actually a pretty high probability that you can survive a venomous snake bite. And then because she likes to eat frogs and toads, this species doesn't have a very potent venom. So their venom is only about strong enough to kill a frog or a toad. So to humans, it's uh, kind of about the same strength as a bee sting. So it would hurt, it would make you like swell up a little bit, but it's uh, not a trip to the hospital most of the time. Just like people can be allergic to bees though, you can be allergic to a hognose snake's venom. Um, 
I know several people who have been envenomated by hognose snakes and nothing happened. Like they experienced a little bit of redness, a little bit of swelling like you would get from a bee sting, but that was it. And then I also know there was a customer of ours a couple of years ago who got bit by one while they are feeding it. They didn't think anything to pull it off and the kid had an allergic reaction ended up in the ER for two days because his body just reacted that way. But these snakes don't want to bite. Like 100% they do not want to bite because their venom is not a good way to defend themselves. Biting is not a good way to defend themselves. They want to be intimidating. So basically what they want to do is they want to scare me away. Think about it. If I'm a deer walking through the woods and I step on this snake, if it hisses, I'm going to go, whoa, and run off because I can get away from it. If it bites my leg, if the snake bites my leg, I'm gonna start stomping all over the ground trying to get it off of me and I'm probably going to kill the snake in the process. So they really don't want to bite. So watch this, watch what I'm gonna do. I take my hand here, I'm gonna put it right on that snake and watch, it is not gonna bite me, watch this. It does yeah, not it want knows. to bite because it knows that biting isn't going to help its situation. Okay. So that's like last case scenario. Last, right? it's last ditch yeah, effort last to make you effort, leave yeah. it alone. And hognose snakes will really use everything they possibly mm. can so that you don't, yep. uh, so that they don't have to bite you or use their venom. So if an animal finds a hognose snake, first thing it's going to do is it's going to sit really still, hoping that you don't see it. If you do see it, you start messing with it. It's going to hiss and huff and puff. It's going to want to be intimidating and scare you away. If you still won't leave it alone, the next thing the hognose snake will do, even before it bites, is that it'll actually start to play dead. So what it'll start to do is it'll writhe around. It'll writhe back and forth on the ground, all back, back and forth. It'll roll over onto its back, showing off its belly. Look at the coloration on that belly. Oh, ooh, whoa. All dark oh, yeah. color, right? Yeah, so if you've ever seen an animal that's dead and has been rotting out in the sun, mm -hmm. um, where its organs are, when it starts to rot, all turns dark and discolored, just like the color of that hognose snake's belly. If it has any food in its stomach, it's going to vomit all over itself. Ah. If it's got any poop in there, it's going to poop yep. all over itself. And then it's going to sit really still, like it's dead, upside down, with its mouth wide open and its tongue hanging out. So to the other animal, the other animal's looking at the snake going, okay, that looks dead and rotten. Right. It smells Is that like dead garter snakes when you pick them up and they get scared they release that scent? They, yeah, they that, must. That, yeah. That must? Exactly. And um, it stinks and you're like, ah! <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to eat that. You don't want to put that like, in your mouth, Wah. right? So the hog snakes okay. will do that same thing and once the other animal's looking at that they're going, okay, this looks dead and rotten. It smells dead and rotten. Maybe I don't want to eat this because if this is rotten and I eat it, I might get sick right. and I might die. So most other animals are going, you know what? I'll find something fresh to eat. They're going to leave the hognose snake alone. Once the threat is gone, the hognose snake will flip back over onto its belly. It didn't have to bite. It didn't have to use its venom. Neither animal got hurt. And they both survived to see another day, which is yeah. pretty cool. Right. If you guys like what you see, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at New England Reptile. We also have an Instagram. <coughs> Thank you, G. No problem. Be careful. Thank you. Ooh, is these snakes get away from you? Yeah, I love snakes. Will we see content like this on YouTube? You definitely will. Oh, great. I'm wondering, if, no, no, no. I'm wondering if she gets any bigger, because if she does get bigger... She's going to get bigger. So then I can keep her in there. Yeah, she's fine. What? Oh, 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 yes! Yes! Finally, something good happened.